The waters around Neville Island will be shark infested this week as the Colonials of Robert Morris welcome the brand new Long Island University Sharks hockey program to Clearview Arena. Good evening, everybody. I am Tim Benz with Mike Pursuta. Thank you for joining us on the UPMC pregame show. The Colonials set to take the ice again after three straight games against Mercyhurst. Now they get the Sharks here on home ice. And Mike, this is a team that's going to have 13 freshmen skating for it. As for the Colonials, they get a big, big spark with Justin Adamo coming back into the starting lineup. We're going to need a bigger boat for Adamo. Uh, possibly, Tim. Uh, one thing, you know, it's only an island if you look at it from the water. So the Colonials have that going for them. But Adamo coming back, they've been waiting on that. And uh, Jordan Timmons could be the next guy to return either next weekend or the weekend after. So Derek Schooley's team getting some of its key components back at just the right time. All right, let's take a look at some of the numbers from the last game against Mercyhurst after two consecutive defeats to the Colonials, excuse me, to the Lakers. The Colonials bounce back and get themselves a huge comeback win with four goals in the third period against Mercyhurst. Yeah, three of those coming in a span of four minutes and 57 seconds, but uh, it wasn't so much the how, Tim. It was the result. The Colonials, after dropping two in a row to Mercyhurst, really needed that win. They wanted that win, and they went out and took it. What about your keys tonight, Mike? What are you looking at as the keys to the game? Well, we got three of them. Number one, don't sleep on the Sharks. Uh, Long Island University is a first-year program, but in four Atlantic Hockey Series so far, the Sharks have only been swept one time. They've been playing competitive hockey. They've won three games out of eight. Number two, keep that complimentary scoring coming. That uh, comeback against Mercyhurst fueled by defenseman Nolan Schaefer, second of the year, less than a minute after the Colonials had fallen into a three-to-one hole. And Roman Kramer, his second of the year, was the game winner. Yes, Adamo's back. Yes, Timmons is coming back, but complimentary scoring never hurts. And last but not least, stay hungry. The Colonials have nothing to prove against LIU the way they did against Mercyhurst, but they can't afford to slip on a banana peel now if they want to keep building a resume for a possible at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. And we're going to talk about some of the quirks to the tournament this year as the broadcast goes along. Colonials coming in 19th in the country, 12-5 overall, 10-3-1 in the Atlantic. That's the second best point total behind AIC in the Atlantic. Goaltending tonight, Mike, it's going to be Dylan Lubesmeyer between the pipes for the Colonials. And they'll have actually a little bit of a surprise in goal. We believe it's going to be Vincent Papura, who's going to be the goaltender for the Sharks. Garrett Metcalf, who we're familiar with after seeing a lot of games against Mercy Hurst. He had played there previously, but he's not going to play tonight. Yeah, a bunch of transfers on this uh, Long Island U team, but not Metcalf tonight. Uh, Dylan Lubesmeyer's been very good in relief. He was solid and then some in that come from behind win over Mercyhurst on January the 30th. All right, when we come back, we will be ready for puck drop tonight as the Sharks visit the Colonials. Again, brought to you by UPMC on the Colonials Athletics Network.
Fairview Arena as the Colonials get set to take on the Long Island University Sharks. Again, brought to you by UPMC. Mike Pursuta, Tim Benz on the call with you. Good to be back. Thanks to Garrow for sitting in during the last game. A fun one. What a comeback against Mercyhurst. Yeah, they dialed it up uh, just when they needed it. It looked grim when the Colonials turned a 2-1 to one third period deficit into a 3-1 to one hole. But uh, a response and then some, that explosion. Three goals and 457. And the Colonials got to be feeling really good about themselves after finally getting over that Mercyhurst hurdle. Now the challenge this weekend is to not take a significant step back against a first-year Long Island team that is better than most uh, first-year teams that we've seen in the NCAA in recent years, Tim. They, they would especially be so if Garrett Metcalf was playing in goal. We talked about him in the open, but he, along with Christian Radzik, Mitch Meek, and Max Balanson, three of their top point getters, uh, five, four, and four apiece in just eight games so far for LIU. Those guys are all in COVID-19 protocol quarantine. Just got late word on that from the LIU Athletics Department. So with that being the case, a young team just got a lot younger with the Sharks. We pointed out 13 freshmen overall playing tonight, 10 of whom are forwards. But also 61 transfers, including Papura, who started his college hockey career at Boston University and shut out Division III Liberty 4 to nothing in uh, LIU's most recent game. You kind of take them where you can get them this year, Tim, you know? If you can't find a D1 dance partner, go to D3. You know what, they already have wins, as Mike alluded to, against a couple of Atlantic teams, three Atlantic teams, in fact, RIT, Holy Cross, and Army, looking for another one here against the Colonials. Tonight and then tomorrow at 3.05, the always popular 3.05 Friday afternoon college hockey start time. I'm very much looking forward to that. A chance given quickly for the Colonials, but Hernandez works it out high to Brian Kramer. Shot comes in and a save for Purpura. And already the Colonials start to mix it up in front with first line center Matthew Guerra. And what a rise to prominence for Guerra. Wasn't playing every game to start the year, but I don't think he's coming out of the lineup anytime soon now, Mike, with no, the way he's performed. Better suited in a top six role, and uh, the line's changed. And welcome back, Justin Adamo. Taking his spot. He only missed three games. Tim, there was some fear that that was going to be a, a long term, if not a season ending injury. But here he is back in uh, gray, if not back in black, as ACDC would say. And we all know that the Colonials want to play as many games as possible. But when it comes to injuries between Jordan Timmons, who's still out, and Justin Damo is making his return, uh, maybe not a bad time, Mike, to have a quiet stretch in the schedule as Adamo already gets a shot on goal in Papura makes another save. Yeah, and what we alluded to, uh, if you were with us in the pregame, you know, with the, with the relative lack of non-conference games this year, Tim, there's a lot of talk going around now about the NCAA tournament bids being assessed by conference. This conference gets this many, that conference gets that many. And there's, there is uh, speculation that Atlantic hockey is going to get two this year. So you want to be in position to get that at large if you don't win the tournament. LIU unable to get the puck out of their zone at all so far in this game, and we're almost 60 seconds into it. And as soon as they say that, they manage to do it and get it across the red line. But the first guy back is Tyler Love for Robert Morris. Gives it over to McKellion, and the Colonials will set up for another attack. Yeah, you just got to look as the puck is deflected out of play. You just got to look at the 1-3-1 that uh, the Colonials expect LIU to rely upon. The idea, you know, it's a, it's a first-year team. These guys haven't played together very much. They try to create turnovers and confusion in the neutral zone and then transition and counterattack. So Robert Morse has to be very careful. This game's probably not going to be sent to the Hockey Hall of Fame in terms of its artistry, but the idea is to get the W however you got to get it. Madoka Suzuki won the faceoff and brings it into the offensive end. A Japanese-born player on the LIU Sharks. Spent a lot of his time in Canada, though and played with Kempville in the CCHL. Papura dinged as one of the Colonial skaters went by him and clipped the left pad. Brad Stinell goes back to get the puck for RMU as there are seven defensemen dressed tonight for Robert Morris. Jeff Lawson, the extra skater on D. Wraparound try from Roman Kramer is batted aside. Nick Lalonde tried to keep it deep, but now the Sharks will break out back the other way. Skating with it is Carter Eckberg, a Pittsburgh product from Peters Township. Former Air Force player, one of those D1 transfers. Kramer takes a short pass, but it's turned right back over to Eckberg. Big kid, six foot two, 190, right-handed shot. 
Lubesmeyer comes out of the net to play the puck as one of the Colonials gets dumped behind Lubesmeyer's cage. Lubesmeyer did a fine job coming in after West took a stick in the eye in that previous game, as Mike alluded to in our open. Yeah, West was gone after the first period. It was uh, two to nothing, Mercyhurst at the time. And the second goal, West really was having vision problems. He just didn't get a good look at it. But uh, Lubesmeyer with an outstanding save on a breakaway. Unfortunately, the Colonials got beat up ice to the rebound. And then uh, shorthanded, making a stop in front with no stick that was really critical as a part of that third period comeback. Puck dribbles to Nolan McElhaney, one of four players dressed tonight for LIU from the greater Massachusetts, Boston area. Kept deep by Long Island, tipped away though by Robert Morris as Lalonde gets his stick lifted, had it for a second, but take it away. Now a little bit of zone time for the Sharks before Kyler Head taps it out. Now the Sharks will re-enter. Coming down the right wing wall, pass in front, smack back, shot comes through, goes over the crossbar. Good look from McElhaney. A little pushback from LIU early. Brian Kramer going down for the block there, and that took away the low part of the ice. Hernandez, deepest four checker, slung across the ice by Ekberg. Love hurries up, tries to keep the angle, manages to do so. Play goes into the corner. Now working from behind the end line. That's McKellian, two on one, had it for a moment, but lost it. Love scoots back behind Lubesmeyer. And the Colonials will break out, but it's fanned on by Perkusik, and play goes right back over to the Sharks again. Gustav Mueller coming down the right wing. Mueller with three goals to lead the way for Long Island amongst active players tonight. Two-line pass, and that's going to go the length of the ice. Perkusik, no icing, chops the stick down from one of the Sharks. No puck support behind him just yet, though. Eventually, Garrick catches up and forces the breakout back the other way. Clean pass out of the zone to Nolan Welsh. Good start for LIU, Tim. Uh, Colonial's not getting much established zone time so far. Clean pass comes to Hart Tekinen from Adamo. LIU defenseman Dor Jordan DeSico falls down, but then gets right back up on his blades. Across the ice from us, that's Tanner Shackle, who collides on the far side with Nolan Schaefer at a big goal in the game last time out against the Mercyhurst Lakers. Quite a shot from Schaefer on that one in the third period, Mike. Yeah, really picked his spot, stepped up on the play well, and went five hole by design and found the back of the net. That was just uh, 54 seconds after Mercyhurst had taken that three to one lead. Really got the game right back under control for RMU. Granny Bear with a good check right in front of us at the scores table a few moments ago. Dump McElhaney. Those guys both get off the ice for their respective teams. Hart Tekinen wants a change. He'll get off. Long pass to Zach Bross, shot deflected, goes high up into the ceiling, now falls down to the ice surface. We played uh, roughly five minutes here, and 0-0 is the score, so a clean start for the Sharks after the first uh, 90 seconds or so were played in their end. You know, we mentioned those transfers, Shackley's from Alaska, Anchorage, Osik, Mass, Lowell, uh, Matt Harris, RPI. There's more, we'll get to them on the next break, but. This is a different first-year program than any that have preceded it in recent years. Roman Kramer wants the pass from Brian Kramer. Got it. That's how they scored their eventual game-winning goal against Mercyhurst last weekend. Yeah, the relative freedom of movement now in, in college sports, not just college hockey, but that, that transfer portal, Tim, has changed the games. Suzuki with a heavy check on Roman Kramer a few moments ago. Yeah, I agree with you, Mike. And especially in basketball, watching that closely, See guys uh, transferring without any concern about this year counting against them mid-season. You see it all the time. It's not happy midway through. You go somewhere else and get your foot in the door for next year. Good pass fielded cleanly on the backhand from Aaron White, who's one of those many freshman forwards from Toledo. Four players converge in front of the 1921 club right now. Cammy Bears line is out for the Colonials. Cam had two goals against the Lakers during the course of those three games. Head dribbles it to himself, shot saved, Perpura. Nice work by Kyler Head to dribble the puck and advance it. Speaking of basketball, almost did a crossover there. Yeah, good uh, hand-eye, knocking that one out of the air and uh, creating an opportunity for himself. Just to uh, finish up our point on the transfers, uh, I mentioned Perpura's from BU. The backup, uh, Brandon Perone's from Alaska Anchorage. We mentioned Air Eckberg from Air Force. Uh, Nolan McElhaney from New Hampshire. 
It's not like you go out and got guys that uh, never played college hockey before, even though LIU never had a team before. Yeah, and obviously those guys, Mike, had pedigree to get into programs like that. Yeah, maybe they just, you know, for whatever reason, didn't have the chance that they're going to get here. Under some pressure, it's McKellion to his defense partner, Love. Uses the sideboards to head. Across the red line it goes. Coming in cleanly is Lalonde. Behind him, everybody swaps out, though. So Lalonde forechecking on his own. Now spins through the circles. Guerra tried to pick off that pass to no avail. And here comes Bross. Giving it now to Osip. First line out there for Long Island. This is the only unit that has any upper class experience. Osip centering Bross and Shackle. And the ones out there for RMU as well. So uh, it's good on good, Tim. There's Eckberg, who's already seen the ice a couple times out. Ooh, deflected shot by the defenseman. Tried to get poked into the net by Perkusa. Couldn't get it by Perpura. Puck stays alive, and Hernandez gathers. He puts on the brakes. Feathers a pass to Guerra. He's dumped down hard, and the Sharks come out of the zone with Nolan Welsh going right in front of the Colonials bench. Tries to pass it to himself. Schaefer says no. He cuts it off. Takes it into the corner. Now one of the Colonials collides with the official. Puck stops in the right corner, kind of close to where the Zamboni comes in. Hernandez all by himself on the far side of the ice. Aerial pass, caught, dropped down by the Sharks. Comes into their offensive zone. Have to peel back, nobody on side. That was Tanner Hops. And the Colonials will finish a change behind the play. Adamo out there right now. Comes to Hops, the six-foot freshman from North Delta, British Columbia. Shot blocker save Lubesmeyer. Rodziak was out there along the half boards, and now he gets off the ice, goes off the back of the net. Granty Bear hustling to get there, but pinching way down the wall is Matt Harris, the senior defenseman for LIU. LIU not wasting a lot of time when it gets in the Colonial's end, uh, getting it back to the point and getting it toward the net. Intercepted pass from McElhaney, whose name we've mentioned quite a bit already. Ebert, good pass, and now it's jumped on by Papuro, the goaltender with 11.52 left. We are still scoreless in the first period. Hart to Kynan. Take a little whack into the goalie, but just gets a little love tap from the Sharks, and we'll get a face off. Yeah, real good play that time by Grant Ebear. Uh, keeping the puck in at the blue line, beating pressure, and then finding Hart to Kynan, who got the puck going toward the net, but didn't get a whole lot on it. Uh, there was a little more there than the Colonials were able to glean, but uh, they had the right idea, Tim. Face off one by Long Island. Spellacy's line has been deployed by Derek Schooley. Sharks able to break out, knocking him down out of the air was Jack Quinn as the fourth line is out for Long Island. Puck falls down right in front of the Colonials bench. Shot coming, it's deflected, doesn't get to Lubesmeyer. Now it's loose in the side. Another shot and a save by Lubesmeyer. Good reaction from Lubesmeyer as that puck took a funky bounce. Very good reaction. He was uh, playing the initial shot, which never got to him, and then made a good, uh, I think, right leg save there on a quick follow-up from just in front of the crease. Shots on goal right now. Robert Morris credited with five, and LIU just getting its second. Luke Smyers' save percentage of .888, a little lower than you'd like, but he's had a couple, three fine relief efforts for the Colonials this season. Yeah, he has been really good in long relief. You're right about that, Mike. When called upon, he's actually been in net a few times as Robert Morris has launched some comebacks. We've seen that, kind of a jump start if one of the other goalies has been pulled. Yeah, Niagara and uh, also Mercyhurst keeping the Colonials in the game and letting them find their game at the other end. DeSico able to get into the Colonial zone. Schaefer, lone man back. Bross creeping in, and now he'll fall back and wait for the Colonials to break out. They do so with Lawson. His pass tipped skyward by Cami Bear, who looks skyward as well, upset that he couldn't keep the puck in play. But he did tip it and avert an icing. Colonials are not trying to force it through the slog in the neutral zone. Apparently they haven't watched Evgeny Malkin play where he tries to just <laughs> skate it through between the blue lines against three, four guys and turn it over. You're saying that's not the way to go, huh? Got to get it deep, Tim, and then you got to go get it again. Second time we've had a bit of a false draw. Now it's fished out by Preston Brodziak from Saskatchewan. Got caught up in the equipment of Jenny, who right now is the leading scorer amongst defensemen in the Atlantic. 
Nick Jenny with 15 points. Next closest, Brendan Katchek, a fine player from AIC. Shot comes in off the post from Matthew Gary. You can hear that one ding. Rang like a tuning fork. Another shot coming. This one from Nick Perkusik. That one rifles wide. Hernandez back in pass goes off the back of the net. Hernandez gets it right back. Try to go between the legs of one of the LIU defenders. Now Hernandez falls down. Brian Kramer crosses over in his case. Deflected from Perkusik goes wide. Now back in the slot again. Looks like Garrett tried to take a hack at it but missed it. Now it's Welsh. It goes around Kramer, stops in the corner, moves it up along the half wall, working it back down, goes off the heel of Adamo. Great flurry by the Colonials a moment ago. A couple of great chances in the slot. No numbers here, two on three for Robert Morris. Almost turned over in the neutral zone, and that's going to be a delayed offside, so everybody comes out for RMU. It's right off the stick of Nolan McElhaney. He's in possession, gives it over to Matt Harris. Tipped in by the Sharks. Lead four checker is Suzuki. Puts on a check on McKellian. Little traffic on the breakout, so Hart to Kynan has to peel back for RMU. 9.07 remaining, we're scoreless here in the first period. Hart to Kynan, now pass comes over to Adamo. Eber knocked down to the ice surface. McKellian falls back into defensive posture. Ross tried to get into the zone, but steered back the other way by RMU. Colonials get a change. Action right in front of us is the Sharks skate in front of the scorer's table. Up in the air it goes. Nice shot. Lubesmeyer throws out the pad, but it just missed. Ooh, that was a close one from Derek Osik. Yeah, second real good look for LIU from that slot area. That one uh, just going wide. The other one kicked aside by Lubesmeyer. Here's Goulash, wanted to drop it off for Spellacy, but couldn't do so without it getting taken away from LIU. Spellacy has it now behind his cage. Angle pass to Schaefer, hard shot, blocked by LIU. Rebound, oh, that one's sitting out there dangerously, but no Colonial can get there. Goulash gave it a shot, but was swallowed up by the Sharks, and now the puck comes into the stands, it's deflected into the stands, and we'll get a timeout. Nothing, nothing to score. 8-11 left to go in the first period from Neville Island. Just got beyond the media timeout here at Clearview Arena, brought to you by UPMC. It's Robert Morris Hockey. Sharks of Long Island and the Colonials yet to put a goal on the board. 6-2, to the shots advantage for the Colonials. Boy, two good ones for LIU, though, Tim. Yeah, a couple of uh, tense moments for Lubesmeyer between the pipes for RMU. Nice reach for Kramer there. That almost turned into something for Long Island. Waiting for it at the right point. Comes out to Ekberg. Wrist shot. That one thunders off the end boards. Jenny, a couple stick whacks there in exchange with Zach Bross. Colonial's trying to get it out of their zone. Reaching for it and fielding cleanly is Kramer. Now he's pushed to the ice by his opposing number 15, Ekberg. Couple of local products, both from the Pittsburgh area. Yeah, Kramer trying to skate it through the neutral zone into a crowd there and turnover results. Lalonde, who's picked up his game this season, backhand pass. Now it goes behind the net. Lalonde had three points in three games in the series against Mercyhurst. The Colonials have had, what, two three-game series, Mike, once against Niagara and then again against the Lakers. High slot, the action for Long Island. Now it comes back the other way to Kyler Head down the left wing boards. He's chased. Now works it up high. Shot comes. That one goes wide. Time and space for Love, but he couldn't get it on target. Yeah, Gets Milan, a long rebound. Milan right on top of the goaltender as well, looking for a tip. That's a, the best of the Colonials opportunities haven't necessarily resulted in a shot on goal tonight, Tim, but they've they've had some plays that uh, developed into very dangerous situations. Kyler Head with a tip in. Now we'll take the long skate width of the ice. Coming on for him is Perkusik. Top line out for RMU. Garrett trying to disrupt things. Pinching down the wall, it's McKellian. That allows the Colonials to maintain possession for the time being. Over to the backhand, Perkusik along the ice and a save from Papura. Yeah, great job following Perkusik across the crease. Hernandez, a back pass to Lawson, getting his second shift. Tapped over to Perkusik. 
stops, pivots, goes outside the circle. Now takes a slap shot. That was blocked down. Perkusic collides with one of his own players. Guerra also involved there. Jordan DeSico from LIU. Tipped, rolls, and now it's pounced on by Papura. We'll get a faceoff with 5.48 remaining in a scoreless tie in the first period. Big question, Mike. Uh, are your eyes adjusted to the LIU uniforms yet? Yeah, I kind of like them. Uh, got the uh, powder <laughs> blue and the, the gold or yellow. Looks a little San Diego Chargers-ish. A little bit, yeah. I could see Phillip Rivers in one of these. No names on the back? I could see Lance Allworth in one of these. Maybe that's the more accurate time reference by me. A little old school, no name on the back, just numbers. Wrist shot caught by Papura. We'll just do it all over again. I actually called a Long Island University football game last year against Duquesne. And uh, it's a lot easier to get these numbers this close than it was from that vantage point at Ar Arthur J. Rudy Field, where you're a little further away. And they've got like the football, like the Steelers rounded numbers. This is a little easier. I'm, I'm more at home with this. Yeah, the, the numbers really stand out on these jerseys, which means everything to a broadcaster. It certainly does. Much like the grays for the Colonials, the dark blue numbers stand out nicely. A good matchup from our vantage point. Adamo using his reach backhand shot. Doesn't get on net. But boy, just a little poke check by Adamo. And again, almost a uh, great scoring opportunity resulting. Elevated right into the body of Humberstone. The six foot freshman from Ontario. Both teams get a change with 5-11 remaining. No goals on the board to this point in the first period. We'll talk to Derek Schooley after the first here on our broadcast. Goulash tips it by McElhaney. Now a wobbling puck comes to Jenny. Goes off the boot of Suzuki. Goulash is shot, easily steered away from Papura. Wrist shot, that one's blocked down by Long Island as well, and they'll trigger out. Bobbled for a moment, then kept in possession by Connor Smoles. He is uh, the extra skater tonight, one of the freshman forwards we talked about earlier. Smoles is a five foot eight freshman. Now it's caught, dropped down by Jenny. Didn't know where it was after he put it on the ice, though. And a turnover. Here comes Long Island University. Wrist shot, save, Lubesmeyer. Long rebound, though. Backhander, that goes wide of Lubesmeyer. Came out high to challenge. Seen uh, good, quick transitions by LIU the last couple of minutes here, Tim. Colonial's got to manage the puck a little better than they have of late. Line drive pass from Brian Kramer. Kept in off the shaft of stick from Kyler Head. A little puck support as the Colonials have two guys deep. But turn over to DeSico. Milan takes a backhanded whack, but the Sharks are able to break out of the zone. Tipped up in the air through the Colonials logo at center ice. Backhand feathering entry from Quinn, and he'll change out. There's plenty of time for the Colonials to set up as they try to leave the defensive zone. Tyler Love, two-line pass. Cammy Bear bumped off the puck, but stays with it. Love tries to elevate, hits one of the Sharks, falls down, and they'll throw it into the offensive end. McKellion goes back to get it with Love for RMU. McKellion sidestep move up to speeds. Cammy Bear. Another turnover in the neutral zone for RMU. Stripped away. Feed from McKellion goes across the ice. Grandy Bears long pass out to Hernandez. Gets up to speed quickly. Hernandez will draw a penalty as he tried to get the shot up. Got hit from behind. Looks like it's going to be a slash, I believe, as Hernandez draws the infraction. As we get the official, we'll get a power play. It's our first man up chance for either team. It's going to be the Colonials going to the man advantage. And yeah, they're calling it a hook. Is, a hook, uh, okay. Robert Morris transitioning quickly that time, and Hernandez almost in alone. As we take another look on the replay, it's Eckberg who will go into the penalty box. So that uh, RMU power play gets its first opportunity of the night. Tied for 10th in the nation, Tim. 23.5%, five shorthanded goals. Uh, that's an issue that uh, the Colonials need to clean up sooner rather than later. Five, five shorthanded goals against. Fernandez wants it at the left point, now drops it off for Hart to Kynan. Jenny center point, gives it over to the right circle. Jenny gets it back, thought about a shot. Bump pass over to Adamo, who's back out on the first power play. Soft feed to Percuse, it turns it over. It's in the blue paint, now it comes back out to Adamo. Nick Jenny on top of the Clearview logo just inside the blue line. Easy pass over to Adamo. Percuse patiently walking through the circle. Now Jenny 
pump fake, slap shot coming from Hart to Kiner, rebound jumped on by Papura. 127 left in the power play for RMU, 224 in the first. We're still scoreless. When I listen to Papura at six foot six and 194 pounds, he fills up a lot of net. Looks like his uh, powder blue jersey is of the extra large variety. Kind of a Matt Murray build, if you will, huh? Faceoff is won by the Colonials, but it actually leaves the zone. Split the two defensemen, or two pointmen rather. Jenny has to glide back to get it. He does so. Pass to Perkusik. Now in possession of Adamo. Can't get around McElhaney. He made a nice play on defense, and that will eventually lead to a clear for Long Island University. LIU uh, 48th in the nation with uh, an average of 14 penalty minutes a game. Only three teams in D1 taking more penalties than the Sharks per, per outing. Halfway through the power play, Colonials change the power play unit. Now they get going, five across into the neutral zone. McKellian, backhand feed to Ebear. Got it in stride. Ebear goes around the net. Tried to fake a move, now gets it up high to Brian Kramer. Return over to Grant Ebear. Wrist shot, it's in! I think Lalonde might have gotten a piece of it. If not, it goes to Ebear, and it's one nut the Colonials. They score on the power play. That's some bad hat, Harry. It's one to nothing, RMU. Yeah, I think you're right. I think Milan got a piece of that. Uh, Kramer just finding Ebear on the half wall and Ebear getting it to the net. And Milan doing the rest as we get a second look at it here. There's Kramer uh, walking the line a little bit and then setting up Ebear who surveys, lets it go. And there you see Milan, yeah, he's signaling right away that uh, that's my goal. RMU off to a one to nothing lead. You know, Tim, I used to hate the water. I can't imagine why. <laughs> Backhand feed. Oh, Papura staying along the ice. Very aggressive move from McKellian there. Why not after the power play and time winding down the first. Wrist shot from left deflected. Oh, it hit Goulash right between the one and the eight or else that was going in. That was ticketed on the deflection by Papura, but it hit Goulash in the back. And then Kramer thought about a bad angle shot but couldn't sell the puck down. Oh, heavy check on Love. He gets up. He appears to be okay. He has the puck right now. He'll wrist it, goes off the boot of Matt Harris, now into the corner. Tracked down by McKellian. More zone time here for RMU right after the goal. They keep momentum going. Love, another wrist shot. That one hits high off of Spellis. He takes a cross check. He's decked down by Hops and a clear for Long Island University. And this is going to be an icing call. So far, so good for the Colonials, Tim. They've, they've played with patience and purpose. They're not forcing the issue. Uh, you know, content to play a scoreless game and then Wait for the chance with the man advantage and pounce. Shots on goal 13 to three for the Colonials. Shot attempts 26 to 12 for the Colonials. Cami Bear will take this face off with 43 seconds left to go. Milan who just got the goal, playing soccer with it right now, manages to keep it inside the blue line, but eventually it comes out into the neutral zone. He's still working hard trying to get it back. Now it just wobbles through the Colonials logo and it bounces off of the stick of Cami Bear. Re-entered by Kyler Head. Far side of the ice is Lalonde, trying to force a turnover. He's got it, feeds the circle, shot. Good save from Papura as Cami Bear got some wood on it. Now Jenny with 15 seconds left. Had it, lost it, got it back in front of the Colonial Crazy section. One opportunity here for Long Island University if they can do something with it. Batted down out of the air, down to five seconds left. And it goes into the bench with 3.3 on the clock. So have to kill out the first period this way. Milan Smith from Eber and Brian Kramer at 18:25. Your official and uh, boy, another point for Grand Eber, Tim, maintaining that the point per game pace. 18 in 18 games, and he's still got the balance of this one to build on that. And you mentioned uh, Nick Milan, the, the steps forward that he has taken. Yeah, four this points year. in the last four games. He had a, he had a turnover that uh, helped cost RMU a goal in the Mercyhurst game, but otherwise played a very active, engaged game. Good step forward for him this year. Long shot blocked before it got to Lubesmeyer, and that's how we end the first. Good look from DeSico, but not on goal, and RMU finishes the first 20 with a 1-0 lead. And dominating the score sheet, as we just gave you some of the numbers a few moments ago, we'll hear from head coach Derek Schooley as he goes off to the locker room after a Successful first, leading after 20. And Derek picking up the headset right now. And Coach, a successful power play to give your guys the lead going in after 20. What would you think of the first? 
probably a little bit what I expected. I mean, uh, they got they got players. They got they got players, but they that's how Mike and I talked before the game. I think they they want to clog up the neutral zone. They want to create turnovers. They want to attack off the rush. You see them in a one-three-one an awful lot. You have to be patient within your game, and if you you want to rush and you want to try to do too much on your own, they're going to cause a turnover, come back. But, uh, you know, I thought we were pretty good. I thought we got better as the period went on. We found some things down low that was work, were working for us. Our D were involved in the offense, but not bad. I don't think, I don't know if we had any major chances that we gave up. So I thought we were pretty good in, in all those scenarios, but it's tough to penetrate and the Scully uh, prepare is good. No plan to ease Adamo in tonight, apparently, Derek. Just uh, he's back and doing what he does. I was told he was 100%. So, you know, you, you play guys who are 100% and healthy. I, we want to put our best lineup in the ice down the stretch. And um, Justin, you know, he was he's 100%. And, you know, he's had some chances, too. So it doesn't look like he's missed a step. I thought, I thought we were pretty good. I mean, I don't know what you guys thought, but. I thought so, too. Also, another point for Nick Lalonde, another goal for Nick Lalonde. Uh, how has his game come along this year, Derek? Well, Nick's a, Nick's a utility guy for us right now. He could do a little bit of everything. Wasn't on the power play. Uh, Timmons is out. He's been on the power play. Got a couple goals. Uh, you ask him to play late game now. He's been more responsible. You know, we moved him moved him around a little bit. Like, these lines were, were thrown together yesterday after we found out Justin could play. And um, we're, we've just been rolling. We've played four lines. And... Uh, you know, we want to use our depth to wear them down and, and go from there. Derek, thanks. We'll catch up with you after the game. Hopefully I'll be happy. <laughs> Derek Schooley, head coach of the RMU Colonials, a 1-0 lead after 20 for his team. We'll be back with more. Look at some of the highlights from the big comeback against Mercyhurst. We'll check out the numbers, too. That's on the way here on the intermission show here on the Colonials Sports Network as we go to break with another look at the goal from Milan. Back at Clearview Arena where the Colonials have a one nothing lead after the first 20 minutes of play as they take on the LIU Sharks for the first time ever. Look at some of the numbers, Mike. 28 uh, attempts for RMU, just 13 for LIU. 14 on net and nine LIU blocks, Tim. That's another characteristic uh, of LIU, the way the Sharks are playing in year one. If they can't trap you up in the neutral zone, uh, they're content to kind of sag back and pack it in around their net and get in front of as many pucks as they can. But uh, the point that Derek Schooley made a moment ago about patience, I think is one worth repeating. These guys are waiting for you to make a mistake and uh, they're gonna try to transition with an odd man rush off of that. And if you don't give them anything, they're gonna have a hard time generating it. So just outlast them, get it deep when you can, work the low to high once you get the puck deep and then go from there. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from that comeback against Mercyhurst. Start things off in the first period. A goal from Jonathan Bendorf, the Lakers, his seventh. Lakers take a one to nothing lead. Later in the first, Lakers still up by one. Mercyhurst short-handed here. Jeff Kitt scores. It's his second of the season. The Lakers take a 2-0 advantage. Early in the second, Colonials in a four on three power play. Nick Jenny will tip it in. His sixth goal of the season that cuts the Laker lead to 2-1. Yeah, seeing the movement on the power play, Hart to kind and ending up out high. Jenny down low, going to the net, tipping that shot pass to get the Colonials on the board. Let's jump to the third early in the period. Bendorf is going to bury a rebound. His second of the game, his eighth of the season, and the Lakers would stretch their lead to 3-1, and it's not looking good. But less than a minute later, Nolan Schaefer beats Lakers goalie Hank Johnson. And the Colonials' response makes it a 3-2 game. Yeah, don't pass up a good look from the top of the circle. And Nolan Schaefer not known for goal scoring, but finding five holes. Not long after that, Colonials score again. Randy Hernandez, his fifth third period goal of the seven that he scored, tying the game at 3-3. And midway through the third, Roman Kramer from the circle. His second goal of the season set up by Brian Kramer, and that gave the Colonials a 4-3 lead. They'd add an empty netter from Spellacy, and they'd win by a final of 5-3. to three. Yeah, real good play by Brian Kramer to keep that puck in at the blue line and then work it down the wall and find Roman Kramer, who had a pretty good uh, snipe himself there. 75 shot attempts in that game for RMU. Yeah, just uh, we've seen a couple times uh, on a couple occasions this year, Tim, that the Colonials were able to counterpunch 
and they're able to score goals in bunches. That's uh, two pretty pretty good characteristics to have as you get ready to play in the postseason. Now, you know, the idea in the postseason is going to be to play from ahead more than behind, but they have that club in their bag. When we come back, we'll be ready for the start of the second period that's on the way here on the Colonial Sports Network. Just about ready to start the second period here at Clearview Arena with the Colonials up one to nothing on Long Island University. Mike, what else is going on in college hockey? Not a great deal, Tim, but a couple finals for you. Sacred Heart beat Bentley today four to nothing. Sacred Heart uh, now three three and one in AHA play. Bentley falling to three and seven. Uh, American International was supposed to play at Army, but that game has been postponed. Only the virus can slow down AIC, Tim. The Yellow Jackets <laughs> leading the pack at 11 and one for a points percentage of .889. Uh, ECAC action tonight. Colgate took care of Clarkson two to nothing. Here we've played 20 minutes. The Colonials are up on LIU one to nothing. They did not give uh, Ebert an official assist on that power play goal. I imagine they will, and if that's the case, it'll be his 18th point. And Mike, that would vault him into a tie for third place in the Atlantic with Randy Hernandez. Perkusik, second amongst Atlantic hockey players with 20 points. The only guy in front of those three Colonials from a different team is Will Calverly. Um, he currently has uh, 20 points in Atlantic hockey play to lead the way. I should point that out. These are Atlantic numbers that I should be giving. And Calverly has 20 points in just 12 games. So he's on a blistering pace. He is, but the Colonials have got their share of guys who can pile up the points this year. And that's, uh, that's a welcome change from what we've seen over the last couple of years. Nick Percusic coming in with 20 points in 17 games tonight. Hernandez, 18 points in 17 games. Ebert, we're going to go ahead and give him his 18th point in his 18th game tonight. Justin Adamo has 13 points in 14 games, so he's just under that point a game pace. And Jordan Timmons, they're waiting on him to come back. Right. Ten, 10 points in 10 games, including eight goals in 10 games. What might this Colonial team look like, Tim, when uh, Adamo and Timmons both get back and get up to speed? Timmons still the team's leading goal scorer. Uh, to this point, despite missing a host of games here of late with that lower body injury. So he will uh, come back to the ice uh, at some point, hopefully soon for the Colonials, and uh, try to reclaim that lead if it slips away over these next few games. If one of those guys with seven manages to get an eighth, that would be Adamo with seven, and Hernandez with seven, and we alluded to it when we were looking at the highlights before. Boy, Randy Hernandez has been good at getting goals in the third period, has he not? Yeah, he's really been clutch and uh, creative and consistent. Colonials now skating from left to right in the gray jerseys. LIU gets it out of their end. Dribbling puck and Brodziak falls to the ice. Guerra upended, a little bit slow getting back to his feet. We'll see if he's okay as the first line is deployed for Derek Schooley to start this second period. Guerra now seems to be moving again okay. Knocks the backhander into the offensive end, and the first line will come off 50 seconds into this second period. The non-existent students cheering via the magic of audio tape. Yeah, every arena seems to have its uh, own version of the chants and the cheers and the level of the volume, too. That one goes behind the net. Hart to kind of tracks it down. Love, who fired five shots in the first period. Long shot, that one ricochets wide. Now Love pinches down the wall. So Love thinking offense in the first. He wants the pass and said it's turned towards the net. That one fired wide off of where the Zamboni comes in. Love able to keep it in again with a pass down to, uh, it's kind of a slap pass down to Ebert down the wall. Shot comes in, good save from Papura who's pinned up against the post. Yeah, Damo getting that one on net with Ebert right on top of Papura, but the Sharks keep it out. Love just three points on the season. I thought he's had a strong game tonight, though. Mike, he stood out to me. Has it on his blade right now as we speak. Two-line pass. Goes all the way into Papura. And Granty Bear lost his stick. Might have been broken. Leaves it on the ice. Sitting out there in the attack zone for RMU. 
Stadel looks over his right, then left shoulder, leaving it for Spellacy. He'll go around a screen from Schaefer. Now Goulash waits to space out with Roman Kramer. Into the offensive end, Kramer the deepest man. Goulash follows up with some support. Rubs out one of the LIU players. Disc floats its way out to one of the Sharks anyway. Now it's re-entered by Spellacy. Coming in is Goulash, applies a check. Puck already gone. Spellacy trying to cut off the exit, but the Sharks leave the zone. Bump pass from Schaefer, doesn't get to the intended target, Goulash. Now it does, rolls it in backhand. Played by the goaltender, Papura to Ekberg. He gets it out in the neutral zone. Schaefer gets in the way, but it floats in from Quinn anyway. LIU changes behind the entry. Milan stops. Long pass all the way across the ice, goes through the legs of Ebert. Knocks it in, and Papura will use that powder blue blocker to jump on it and puts it into the glove, and we'll get a whistle, and we'll get a face-off to the right-handed catching side of Papura. Nice play by Jenny there a moment ago. You know, we talk a lot about his skating and his creativity and the points he produces, but using his body in the corner to win a one-on-one -on -one battle and just efficiently get the puck out of the RMU zone. One of those little plays you don't think about unless it goes wrong. No pressure coming for Brian Kramer. As the Sharks yeah. set up on their own blue line. Every, well, one of them. Yeah, one four yeah. checker, and now they come Everybody in. Everybody else in the neutral zone. Now, <laughs> now they, they jump into it. Pass in front. Move on. Lubesmeyer shot, and a good save by Lubesmeyer. Kept it out, I believe. And there's going to be a penalty coming against RMU. Lubesmeyer stayed with that puck the whole way, almost scored it through his pads and across the end line. But Lubesmeyer battles and keeps it out of the goal. I wonder if we'll take a look. We're going to get a slashing call on Perkusik. Yeah, the Sharks thought they scored. We were... Uh, Watching them all hang back in the neutral zone and clog that up again, and then they pounced when the Colonials hiccuped on the way out of their end, and this game very close to being tied up. Well, we'll get a little bit of a better look at it. As you see the slash from Perkusik. As the power play now comes for the first time for Long Island University. Now it's coming up top to DeSico. Deflected by Hart to Kynan. DeSico can't keep it in the offensive end and they'll have to reset. That was Gustav Mueller who had the great look right on uh, Lubsmeyer's doorstep. Six foot, 192 pounder from Sweden. He's got it right now. Comes down along the left wing boards. All the way out to the top of the right point. Now comes over to DeSico. Good puck movement here from the Sharks. Shot save, Lubesmeyer with 1.23 left to go in the power, in the power play. The power play, not the strength of this uh, LIU team. Tim, number 48 in the country, just uh, an 8% success rate. Two for 25 and two shorthanded goals against. Another look at the penalty here. Yeah, turnover along the wall and then uh, LIU pouncing on that, but Dylan Lubesmeyer, as he was against Mercyhurst, really good with people right on top of him. Clear for the Colonials. Still 1-0, RMU in front of LIU. Coming down to the one-minute mark left to go in the power play. Sharks able to come in onside. Slap shot goes over the crossbar. Almost bounced over the goal on the rebound, but LIU still in possession. DeSico trying to get the Colonials defensive players moving. Goulash follows him. Now it gets down low off the stick from McElhenney. Colonials trying to clear. DeSico flutters a pass in the air over to Mueller. Now it goes behind the end line. Shackle gets it back up high. And it's bodied out by Kramer with just 28 seconds left to go in the man down for Robert Morris. Adamo now shorthanded coming to one on three. Wrist shot doesn't get through. And maybe one more rush here for Long Island University. Dangerous play there. Adamo lurking with that reach. Down to 10 seconds. Love is there. He collides with one of the Sharks. It's loose in the corner where the band normally sits. Coming here to Harris. Shot comes in. Save Lubesmeyer again. Snuggles it up against the Colonial logo. Hanging with it. And the power play is over for LIU. Yeah, excellent job by Lubesmeyer. Tracking that puck through a crowd and not allowing any kind of rebound. Take another look at the replay. Through a host of bodies as Harris got it on net. 
14-38 remaining in the second, and still 1-0 RMU. Players a little late to a line here on the faceoff. Draw back to the Sharks, they can't keep it in the zone. Falling back is Ekberg, who took a penalty earlier in the game, the only power play for the Colonials, and they scored on it. That was the long with the power play goal, that's why we sit at 1-0 right now. Lalonde's fifth of the year, Tim, he's approaching that uh, seven figure that he posted as a freshman. Just two goals last year for Nick Lalonde. Goes behind Hernandez, doesn't know where it is, overskates it. Re-entered by Long Island University from Aaron White. Love pokes at it, and it went in. Oh, it went, what a bad break for the Colonials. It went up and over the cage and off the back of Lubesmeyer. Tyler Love poked at the puck. It went airborne, went off the backside of the goaltender and into the net. Fluky goal for Long Island University, and they have tied it up at 1-1. Yeah, but those count too, and that almost happened a moment ago. I don't know if LIU went to school on that shot a, a few moments ago that was rocketed off the back wall and, and almost bounced back over the net in similar fashion. But there you see the loose puck, and uh, looked like it went off of Love and then off of Lubesmeyer and into the net. Uh, not the way you draw it up, but they all count one, and we are tied at one. So we got a 1-1 hockey game. We'll see who gets credit for that goal. As I believe the last stick that it touched was Tyler Love. We'll wait for the official, but... That might take a little while to figure that out. Maybe Jack Quinn from behind the end line. Uh, gets away from Schaefer, rolls all the way out behind the red line. Stinell there for RMU. Backhand pass misses Ebert. Now it's taken quickly by Mueller. Pulls up, shot comes in, deflected into the netting, and we'll get a stoppage in play. 13-28, one to one the score in the second. Colonials uh, still have to apply uh, that patience that Derek Schooley was talking about. Can't get frustrated by the bad bounce. LA LIU is going to keep doing what it does. And the Sharks are, are playing the type of uh, game in terms of pace that they're comfortable in. Quinn's going to get the goal, Mike, his first uh, college goal. They get a bounce there, and here they are tied up. Shot from the lawn, rolls to head. Uh, DDD pass misses Jenny as he was skating towards the puck, went wide of him. Leaning into his skates with Suzuki. Lubesmeyer comes out, jumps on the puck, will freeze it here with 13.08 remaining in the second and a 1-1 game. No assists on that one? I uh, didn't hear any. We'll I don't think, I think that one's legitimately unassisted. Uh, We're debating the first one. It's gonna be a stretch if uh, anything's applied to that. See how the Colonials respond here. Can't get frustrated and start taking chances and try to get it back right away. Just keep playing the way they've been playing and kind of let the game come to them collectively. Harris, diagonal dump in. Now we got a whistle behind the play. Called an right. icing? I guess so. And he'll bring it back into the Colonial offensive end. Haven't mentioned yet, Mike, head coach Brett Riley. We have not mentioned head coach Brett Riley, part of the first family of American hockey. Brett Riley, the son of Rob Riley, and the nephew of Brian Riley, and the grandson of Jack Riley, 1960 gold medal winning coach of the U.S. Olympic team. Shot in, saved by the goaltender Papura. Rob Riley coached Army for 17 years, and then Brian, the current head coach, took over. And it was uh, nephew against uncle on January the 16th at Tate Rink at West Point, and uh, LIU wins it 3-2 to two in overtime. One of their three wins against Atlantic Hockey Schools, RIT and Holy Cross, the other two. Two of those went overtime, Tim. They're all one-goal wins. Ooh, that one clanks off the glass, the 1921 club. Can't wait to get people back in the hat trick club, the 1921 club, the sooner the better to get bodies back here at Clearview Arena. That first win in program history came in the first LIU game in program history, 3-2 in OT over Holy Cross, 4-3 over RIT, and 3-2 over Army. Those are the success stories in the first eight games for LIU. Far corner all the way across the ice from us. Two players fall down now right in front of the LIU bench. We got a whistle coming. Probably going to be interference against LIU. I wasn't sure who they were going to call that against. Looked like uh, kind of a hockey play-like collision, but they are going to... Shackle. 
Get shackled for two minutes, so that Colonial power play back in action. Tanner Shackle, a six foot five, 220 pound junior from Wasilia, Arkansas. Now, if I told you that a college hockey team had a roster that featured a player from Sweden, a player from Japan, and a player from Arkansas, which one would surprise you the most? Arkansas. <laughs> the hockey hotbed of Arkansas. Uh, Jenny on the half wall to Adamo, through the circle, trying to turn it over to Perkusik. They love that play. They do it all the time. And Perkusik's good at it. But it's kept out by Papura. Adamo wants it in the circle. Now he'll walk it back out high, looping around. Puts it on the backhand, surveying the situation, gives it to Perkusik. Lost the puck for a second. Manages to re retain possession. Along the ice, stopped by Hernandez. Back in feed, shot Adamo, and it goes wide. Good look from Hernandez. Good hands in the pass. Jenny D to D pass, wants it back, goes to Hernandez. He'll skate through some traffic. Through the Clearview logo, left behind by Hernandez. Shot deflected into the corner by LIU. Perkusik is there, and it's hammered for a clear by LIU. Yeah, Clonus had a little something going there. Hernandez trying to clear a lane with his speed, and then a drop pass, but another one of those patented LIU shot blocks, Tim. Down to 11.27 on the clock with the Colonials and Sharks tied at one apiece. Power plate. 56 seconds left to go on it. Second one for the Colonials. They scored on their first. Drop pass to Ebear. He and Lalon connected for that goal. Lalon wants it, drifts back. Allows Spellacy to cut back down the wall. Bank pass to Lalon, touches it right back over. Now at high, the puck comes to Brian Kramer. Return to McKelly, and it rolls on him. Goes through the slot. Ebear's there as the ice tilts the other way. Brian Kramer thought about a shot. Now gives it the circle. McKelly and Rockets one, it goes off the glass and clears on its own. Yeah, it just missed that uh, top shelf glove side. Had it measured and uh, just missed it. 17 remaining on the power play. One to one the score, 10 38 left to go in the second. Chance coming now short handed for Long Island. 2 1 1, but it's knocked away. Good job there from Brian Kramer and back checking with Spellacy to aid and assist as well. Colonials flirting with disaster. We mentioned earlier five short handed goals against. And Almost another opportunity. Milan, Iber, score, two to one, just after the power play ends. They reverse what happened on the first goal. It was Iber with the shot, Lalonde the tip. Now Lalonde gives it to Iber, and the Colonials retake the lead. Show me the tank. Colonials back in front. Yeah, the Colonials playing a little transition game, uh, averting disaster with the two on one against, and then uh, getting it out of their end quickly, and. Tim, I don't think it's going to be any question about Ebear's worthiness for a point here. That's his sixth goal, and we believe his 19th point of the season. Nick Lalonde with the feed, and Ebear making no mistake. Another point for Lalonde. Stanell tries to get it airborne and does, so that it stays in the offensive end momentarily, but the Sharks break out right in front of the Sharks bench. Schaefer, some problems handling the puck. Momentum of it carries it all the way into the far right corner. Good check though, stops that momentum as Quinn, now a penalty is coming. Quinn was pushing it into the corner and tried to keep it going, but Schaefer managed to slow things down. We'll see what the whistle, is that just an offsides? It's definitely an offsides. Was there a penalty behind the player? Uh, we'll step aside and figure it out. Doesn't look that way. We'll be back, I believe, with even strength hockey when we return two to one. Colonials out in front of the Sharks. 9.50 left in the second period. It's 2-1 Colonials out in front of the Long Island University Sharks here at Clearview Arena on Neville Island. Five on five after the Colonials missed out on a power play but scored immediately thereafter. Lalonde and Ebert connecting again. Stanell across the ice, wraps it around. Stopped before it leaves by Harris. Behind the end line, feeds in front. Now comes back out high again. Shot save, Lubesmeyer. Through a host of bodies, Lubesmeyer tracked that one well. Good shot from McElhaney. Now a wrist shot deflected from Shackle. After he spent time in the penalty box, rolls off the stick here of Harris. Hernandez creeping. That speed, you don't want to turn it over to him in the neutral zone. Yeah, a little change up for Derek Schooley here. He's got uh, Hart to playing with Perkusik and Hernandez. Oh, dangerous there, but Lubesmeyer got over, burped it up, now pounces on it. That looked like a lot of open net on the 
right side of Lubesmeyer, but Sharks couldn't get a shot on goal. Hard to kind of playing in the spot where Guerra had been when the game started. Uh, the official on that goal, Tim, uh, Ebert, his fifth of the season, and the assists go to Lalonde and Brian Kramer at 941. That's brought back and uh, gonna call false draw on this one. Looks like they are. I don't know if this is injury related or not, Mike, or just a coach's decision. Remember in the first shift, Guerra took a puck off the ankle. Yeah, uh, Lalonde now up with uh, Ebert and Adamo, so uh, the, the deck is shuffling. We'll keep an eye on that. Can't see the names and numbers from where we are on the Colonials bench. Now Adamo on the far side. Lalonde is there, pass to Ebert. Lalonde drags it backwards to Ebert, now to Adamo. So they've moved Lalonde up, it appears, after these two points. Love shot, hits a body. I think it got caught up in the equipment of one of the Sharks as McCollum made the block shot. Eight forty-six left in period number two. Colonials doing a nice job not panicking after allowing that fluky goal, Tim, and just sort of staying with the game and applying that patience that uh, Derek Schooley said was so important after Ooh. period number one. Lalonde, bad angle shot. Adamo was there for the rebound. Didn't get enough wood on it, though, and it was scooped up by the goaltender, Papura. Reset the faceoff. Kramer and Jenny deployed on defense right now for RMU. Brian Kramer over to Jenny. Slap shot deflected high over the crossbar. That one almost elevated into the net. Just got a little too high too quickly. Along to the corner. Kramer down the wall. Gets by Kramer. Now to Adamo. He's hounded by Nolan Welsh. Milan ducked a check that was coming from Brodziak. Sharks getting a change behind the play as the Colonials break out. Long pass tipped in by Lalonde. Snow icing here. Deepest four checkers, Ebert. Boy, did he bury one of the Sharks' defensive players. Ebert lowering the boom. Granny Bear I'm talking about. Shot blocker save Lubesmeyer. Long rebound. Lalonde making sure he's not too close to the oncoming Garrett Worth. Now comes out through the Clearview logo. Kept in by Long Island. Spellacy takes a chop. Now Lalonde has it, he'll play it backwards and actually missed the pass to one of his defensemen and Lubesmeyer to make the save on his own guy. Yeah, that was uh, Stanell, the puck jumping over his stick, but he made a real good play seconds earlier as uh, Stanell and Lubesmeyer have a little chat about what's going on or what should be going on out there, but uh, a loose puck and Stanell able to clear it out of harm's way before LIU could get to it. I'm still not seeing Guerra, and the two wingers just swapped out, and Spellacy stayed on at center, shot wide. So we'll continue to monitor that. Now Spellacy pushed hard at the boards by Jacob Franchik. Kramer and Spellacy get up. Roman Kramer will check back on Jack Quinn. The goal scorer, as it were, for Long Island after the puck rode up the stick of Tyler Love on the poke and went right off the back of Lubesmeyer for the Sharks' lone goal tonight. 7.09 left, Colonials up 2-1. to one. Goulash deep on the forecheck. Now rolls through the slot. And over there, Spellacy, and boy, he got hit hard. Reverse hit. Spellacy really hammered there. Is he all right? Gets back up okay, it appears. Tracked down by Kyler Head. Goulash is going to come off. Spellacy reaching for the puck, tries to return the favor on a hit. And Lubesmeyer will keep the play alive to Tyler Love. Gare is out now with the fourth line, Tim. So apparently this is uh, shift by design as opposed to out of necessity. Gare backhand goes over Cammy Bear. Now Jenny kind of took a stick in the head. Didn't get a call, though. Came from Tanner Shackle. And now we've got a penalty coming as it's touched up. It's going to be a slash on Cammy Bear. So a power play coming. No, is it on the Bear or is it on the Sharks? Uh, Bear looks skyward. I thought he touched it. Yeah, he's coming over. I thought they blew it when uh, LIU had the puck, but uh, my mistake. Yeah, power play coming for Long Island University. It'll be their second. 
And again, this has not been the strength for Brett Riley's first year program. 8% coming in, only three teams in the country had a worse uh, percentage with the man advantage. I guess it's a little worse than eight now because uh, the Sharks are 0 for 1, but just a goal down and just a shot away from tying this thing up. Humberstone was the Sharks player who was in possession of the puck when Ebert slashed him and draws the foul, the uh, penalty. Infraction, and now the wrist pass is intercepted by Perkusik. Can't get it out of the zone, though. Wrist shot kicked away before it gets in on net to Lubesmeyer. Shackle throwing the body around. It's cleared by RMU. Yeah, Perkusik a little trouble getting it out the first time, but uh, the Colonials take advantage of a second opportunity. Shackle has it, comes in across the blue line. Adamo wrestles with him, able to get the puck free for a moment. Good puck support down the wall, though, for Long Island. And now around the circle, here comes DeSico. Wrist shot goes high, knocked down. Lubesmeyer doesn't know where it is, and finally it's gotten off the low-hanging railing here. A clear attempt for the Colonials, but it hit the low ceiling. So we'll get a face-off still in the offensive end, I believe. No, they're going to put in the neutral zone. Yeah, Lubesmeyer looking a little handcuffed there, but doing what he had to do to keep the puck out. Just that... Uh, Bad bounce goal has gotten past them so far, and it really didn't get past them as much as it did get behind them. Had a scramble for a minute on that sequence. Brought in by Tanner Hotz. McKellion on the backhand. Bunch of players converging in the near left corner. Chance for the Colonials to clear. They do partially. Down to 49 seconds on the man up for LIU. McKellion behind the end line. Schaefer there, puck is pinned up against the end wall. Lubesmeyer watching closely to see what the two Sharks players who are up high are doing. Hops lurking with Matt Harris. Now down to 28 seconds left in the power play. Comes down to the goal line, now return pass up high to Harris. He'll change out positions with Tanner Hops. Right back to Harris. Wristing one that's deflected by Spellacy and it's cleared by RMU. Good block by Spelsey after he failed to get a clear out of the zone, emerging out of that scrum along the far wall. McKellian taps it to Jenny, followed by Franchuk. Long pass comes to Goulash. Cami Bear out of the penalty box. Now Goulash rolls towards the goaltender. Cami Bear takes a knock at it, but it doesn't get in on a goal. Everybody between the circles. Now things get spaced out as the Sharks enter. And it's going to be icing. Icing, it appears. Puck just getting over Ooh. the line after the Colonials had a couple of whacks in front. Nothing to show for it, but. 2 to 1 RMU, 403 left in the second. Ebert from Lalonde, and then Lalonde to Ebert. Ebert's been really consistent this year, Tim. You know, we've talked a lot uh, about Timmons early and Hernandez with his timely clutch goals. Prakusic starting to pile up some points now. But uh, Grant Ebert really taking steps forward this year. Easy catch a moment ago from Papura, and we'll get another face off. Jeff Lawson out there on defense right now with Tyler Love. Ebert's line with uh, Adamo. And trying to make out who that is on the far side. A little bit of the juggling as we talked about in this second period from Derek Schooley. Looks like Lalonde will stay out on the left side of Ebert. Face off one by Ebert. Gets by Lawson though at the point. Quick pass over to Love. Gains red. Wraps it around the glass. Lalonde by himself. And lets that one get by him. Any idea as to why? I don't know. I thought he was. I, was, I thought he had a broken stick or something. Long rebound. Lubesmeyer's able to get back in position. I, I was kind of befuddled by that too, Mike. I thought, was he dummying the puck, thinking there was somebody at the point? Because there wasn't. Yeah, it looked like he was getting out of the way of it. And I thought the same thing you did, broken stick, but he's still playing with it. That was just a weird reaction there. Good stick lift in the offensive end from Zach Bross. And that allows the Sharks to maintain possession. Shot, rebound, save. Lubesmeyer, 3-12 left to go. 2-1. Colonial still lead. Yeah, that was a bizarre play. It, looked, it almost looked like he was intentionally not 
trying to touch the puck, Lalonde. Maybe just completely lost sight of where it went and where it came from. It was almost like he was looking at it, though. I was very confused. Hart to Kynan's line out there right now. He'll take the face off and win it backwards. Fernandez wants a pass to skate it out of the zone. Bounces away from him, though. Bump back from Perkusic. Hernandez circles around. He'll angle a pass to Hart to Kynan. Perkusic waits for him at the blue line. Hernandez wrist shot, tough angle. Stanell is there, he'll keep it in at the point. Right back down to Hernandez again. Trying to step over a stick and out to center ice it goes from the Sharks. Hard wraparound entry from Nolan Schaefer. Stanell at left point, bats it in with the backhand. 2.40 left to go in the second, Colonial's up a goal. Cusick on the half wall, comes to Hernandez. Pass over to Hartzikon and try to put it between his own legs. Wide open net, Hernandez couldn't get the toe of the stick on it. Oh. All sorts of room to shoot, and the Colonials couldn't cash in. Yeah, winning races to loose pucks, but uh, unable to handle it cleanly in the slot area on a couple of occasions there. But good hard work to set those plays up. Well, the Sharks wiped out on his blades there. And attempt to get it on net from Perkusik, who's out of gas at the end of the shift. He will gleefully get to the bench. He was out there for a long time. And Guerra falls down. Sort of a delayed offside. Yep, and he... Just allows the Sharks to get it out. And now we got a whistle here. Is that an icing too? It is. It came uh, from behind the red line. Colonial's really doing a good job getting the loose puck, getting the puck deep, and then getting to it and doing something with it as we get a, another look at that sequence. There you see it bouncing, bouncing, and in the feet, <coughs> and rolling off the blade, and the net yawning. Oh. And the Colonials unable to finish there. But uh, good hustle and good hard work, Tim. Shots on goal, 19 to 14 in favor of the Colonials. Jenny wants one. Goes off the ankle of his own guy, Cammy Bear, now deflected off the stick from Papura. And good. Jenny has it in the neutral zone. Good job by Papura to keep that rebound away from Guerra, who was open in front. Shots attempted 46, I think that 47 to 31. Colonials with 90 seconds left to go in the second period off a goal. Guerra in front of the 1921 club, taken away by Long Island University. Oh, heavy check from Kyler Head. Oh. But an opportunity from Mueller. Leaves it back, wrist shot, deflected into the netting. Checking on Rob McCollum. He was the one that took that big check from Kyler Head. Size disparity on that one. Well, maybe not so much. Collum's a little bigger than he looks. 6'2, 181. Head at 6'4, 209. And he has uh, thrown his weight around this year. His first with the Colonials. Had a goal in that three game series. He's got two on the year, and one of them came against Mercyhurst. Spellacy. Backhand pass, misses Goulash. Spun around by Harris to his defense partner, McElhinney. Now through the zone, it comes. Love gets hugged by Shackle. Front of the Colonial Crazy section. Doesn't leave the defensive end. Now it does. And Kramer has it all by himself on the left side. No numbers, though. One on four. Tries to beat everybody towards the net, but ran out of real estate into the end wall. Boy, nice play, though, to chip it out of the zone and, and turn nothing into something there for Kramer. Two on three. Here comes the Sharks. Far side, shot comes in, goes wide of Lubesmeyer from Osik. Airborne caught, dropped down by McElhaney. 24 seconds remaining in the second. Lubesmeyer will play it momentarily, now leaves it for McKellian. Two line pass to Adamo. Drags it to himself, Adamo trying to create space for himself. Turning shot came in on goal, but knocked away by Papura, who was true along the ice, tracked that well. Jenny, wrist shot, that one goes off the pad of Papura. Lalonde, bad angle, shot goes behind the net. Three seconds, two seconds, then I'll do it for the second period. It's two to one, Colonial still out in front. We'll wrap up the first 40 when we come back on the Colonial Sports Network.
Returning to Neville Island with a 2-1 score on the board after 40 minutes. Michael, look at some of the numbers. Shots attempted very much in favor of the Colonials. Also positive in the shots on goal. And as a result, Long Island, we've talked about their ability to block shots. And you can see that being displayed. Yeah, and uh, I think that was a better period for RMU than the first period. Uh, when it ended uh, last uh, several minutes, it looked like RMU was getting to loose pucks in the LIUN. First off, the Colonials just hammering the puck into the LIUN. Then they were going and getting it. They were winning races. They were uh, getting the pucks along the boards and getting them to the slot area, uh, bouncing on them a little bit. But it looked like LIU was in scramble mode. Uh, the defense was breaking down. Uh, Colonials, I think, applied more pressure as that period went along. And uh, while we're in the same situation we were after 20 minutes, RMU is up by just a goal, Tim. I think the Colonials uh, have a right to feel like they're in a little more control of this game after 40 minutes than they were after 20. 26-17, the faceoff advantage for the Colonials, too. Granty Bear, not only does he have two points, but also um, faceoffs. He's won eight of ten draws thus far. Cammy Bear, his brother, has won five of seven draws to this point. Nick Perkusik with six shots, three on goal. He's tied with Adamo, also six shots, three on goal in his return game from injury. McKellian has attempted five. Tyler Love has attempted six. Looking at the LIU individual numbers, if I can get those to change over. McElhaney, six shots, two on goal. And uh, looking at the faceoff department for them, Franchuk has won five of seven draws to this point for the Sharks. When we come back, talk some college hockey in general. Mike made an interesting point about some of the selection process. We'll discuss that, look at the Atlantic standings and more. That's on the way next on the Colonial Sports Network. Colonial's winning two to one after 40 minutes of play. Zamboni's on the ice. But Mike, they've had lots of opportunities and this game could be a little more in their favor based on some of the chances that the Colonials have had that we'll look at. Yeah, here's a couple of them. As you see Hernandez dealing down low to Adamo and a near miss. Adamo's been active tonight in his uh, welcome back to the lineup. There's Hernandez again, trying to get the puck to heart to kind, and he's got a lot of room there, but can't get it out of his skates. Then he tries to go back to Hernandez, doesn't get much on it, but you, you see a lot of open net and uh, the puck in the vicinity of it, but Colonial's unable to finish there. And Guerra, this is from the first period, all oh, right off the corner. He was ticketing that one over the stick side, but to no avail. Meanwhile, on the power play, these are the goals that did go in. Hubert comes down the wall, deflected in from Milan. Now gave the Colonials a 1-0 lead on the man up. Now a look from ice level. Yeah, a little player movement by Kramer at the blue line. That sets up Hubert, and he does not waste any time. You got a shot, take it, right? Have you heard that at all lately? I've heard it, I just don't see it. If you're talking about the <laughs> NHL level, as that's what you're alluding to. And then they reverse course, Levan to Ebert. Yeah, that was a nice transition by RMU after a two-on-one went arrived for LIU. And Levan had two options. He had Spelsi to his right and Ebert to his left. He went to Ebert and Grant Ebert. Really coming back strong this year, Tim. An injury plague year last year. And uh, he's already got more goals than he had a season ago. And uh, a big component of this Colonial offense, which just two goals tonight, but they're playing a patient, you know, don't give up anything easy type of game, as they should be. But uh, this is a much more potent Colonials team than we've seen in recent seasons. I think that's why uh, they're starting to generate the excitement that they have as we look toward the postseason. More to come from the intermission report when we come back. LIU and RMU, Colonials in front, two to one with 20 minutes left to play. Mike, let's take a quick look at the other scores in college hockey. And I say quick because it's a Thursday, so there's not much going on yet. Yeah, just two games, Tim. Sacred Heart four, Bentley nothing. That's a final. And Colgate knocked off number 13, Clarkson, two to nothing. That's also a final. Number 17, AIC, was supposed to play at Army but that game has been postponed. How's the tournament gonna go? Great question. And, oh, and uh, when I say tournament, I mean Atlantic and I mean big tournaments. To be determined, uh, everybody's still trying to figure that out, but it's interesting. People are starting to speculate at what a 16-team NCAA tournament might look like, and 
Uh, the interesting factor there is uh, there's no non-conference as we normally have seen it in years past. So the pairwise doesn't matter this year. And uh, there's a guy that writes for College Hockey News named Adam Wooden, who's done this uh, for a long time. And he is speculating that uh, the tournament could look like this. Three teams from the National Collegiate Hockey Conference, three from Hockey East, three from the Big Ten, three from the WCHA, two from the ECAC, and yes, two from Atlantic Hockey. The reason they're assigning numbers uh, that each conference will get instead of just having teams qualify is without that pairwise, you really can't compare conferences. So there is some talk that the six person committee will resort, and Derek Schooley's on that committee, by the way, uh, they'll resort to just assigning each conference X number of teams based on how many it has averaged in recent seasons. Now, the curveball there is the ECAC only has four teams playing this year. So do you really want to put half of one conference right. in the tournament? Is that legit enough? So if you wanted to say go with four from the Big Ten instead of three or four from the National Collegiate instead of three, you can always take one away from the ECAC. ECAC. Uh, the point of all this is Atlantic Hockey has a real opportunity to get two teams this year because AIC at number 17 in the country is looking very legit with the record that it has. And the Colonials, number 19 in the country. Tim, if they can keep building on this 12 and 5 that they took into action tonight, it might be a year where you don't have to win the Atlantic Hockey Tournament, whatever format that ends up playing out as. And that's a big question, too. Yeah, you might not have to win that to make it to the NCAA Tournament. Now, one way to make all this that we just went over a moot point or as Bill Cowher might say, mute, yes. is to drop one of these games against LIU because you hamper significantly your argument to being at large if you lose to the first year expansion LIU Sharks. So this really for the Colonials, Tim, it amounts to a six period game this weekend. They gotta win these two games. They don't need any style points, but they gotta get the two W's. Through two periods, so far so good. And it's been very close, two to one, Robert Morris. And the Sharks jump right into the action. But it's whistled very quickly, just 10 seconds in on the offsides. Colonials got stronger in that second period than they had been in the first. And that's the way it worked out against Mercyhurst on January the 30th, Tim. The uh, chances, three, six, and nine in the three periods for a total of 18. Mercyhurst chances, five, four, and three for a total of 12. Percusic comes swooping in. Action stops along the left wing boards and the Sharks turn it back out. Welsh enters, Jenny there, backhand up to Perkusik, out of the zone it comes. Right in front of the penalty box is all the way back goes Matt Harris. Ian McElhenney starting things off on the blue line. Backhand pass goes by McKillian and into the offensive zone for the Sharks. Tyler Love peers over his shoulder to see where the heat is coming from. McKillian has it, moves it up. And he's checked and goes down right in front of the 21 club. Actually, that was Adamo who got wiped out. Yeah, Hernandez looking for a call there as well. Didn't get it. Hebert tried to put it in the air into the zone. Couldn't do it. Caught, dropped down. And Brodziak comes in. Pass goes through the slot. Long shot comes in. Lubismar can't play it cleanly. Goes behind the net. And some anxious moments here early in the third for RMU. Yeah, all resulting from a turnover coming out of the RMU end. Stick loose in the left circle. Colonials get it out through the neutral zone. Adamo comes out. Pass down below the end line. Tyler Love checking into Gustav Mueller. Those two go down. Love applying a hit into the back of Mueller. Hubert still out there, skates along the red line. Now he Gets a check on McCollum, and the Bear, the last guy off from that unit, gets off the ice. The lawn comes off too. Got a yard sale starting in the Colonial yeah, end. We got a, a glove stick, and a stick. A glove, everything. Two minutes gone by in the third. Colonials up two to one. Long shot steered into the corner by the goaltender Perpura. Kid's got intriguing size, does he not? Yeah, he really does. You can see why Boston University liked what they looked looked at when they recruited him. Yeah. He must not have been arrogant enough to fit in there. <laughs> 
Is just, that from just kidding all you BU fans. <laughs> Particularly you, Mike Sullivan, if you're catching the broadcast. <laughs> I kid, I kid, because, you know, that's what you do. 17.37 left. The Colonials up 2-1. to one. You Get the face off to the stick side of Purpura. Now Derek Schooley barking at uh, Cammy Bear, telling him to step off the face-off dot. They want Garrett to take it, but it's moved out through the neutral zone anyway by Long Island University. Lines looking in this period as they did in the second period, not the way they did in the first period. Now Guerra quickly gets around McElhaney, lost his stick, as did the defenseman Matt Harris. Jenny stops in a dime. Wasn't able to maintain possession, though. Now the Sharks pass it off the Colonials bench. Swinging at it and barely getting a piece was Brian Kramer in his defensive end. At center ice, Carter Eckberg. Oh, Kyler head wiped out. Does that play still come in on side? It did somehow. I thought well, that brought Granty Bear off sides. It's about four guys that have gone down already here. Check the Zamboni, Tim. Caught by Eckberg. And an entry, long entry, it's caught by Lubesmeyer, and the Sharks will use that as a chance to get some fresh troops out there. They set up in a 1-2-2. Two, two. Now it comes out to Hernandez, kick that, try to put it through the defenseman's legs, that's Ekberg. Hart to kind of backhand feed through the blue paint. Perkusik was there, was there, but not in time. Outside of the circles, Hart to kind of had to take it away. Stick handling now and moving the puck is Humberstone. Love looking for Perkusik, can't hit him. Shot goes behind the net. Lubesmeyer watching. Pump fake from Zach Bross. Now he has it. Bross tries to wrap around. Shot comes in. Save Lubesmeyer with a pad along the ice. Oh, left pad after he tried to deny the wrap around. Really athletic reaction by Dylan Lubesmeyer. Shackle, a great chance for LIU, but Lubesmeyer robbed him. He's been outstanding, Ooh. Tim, on, on plays that have been right on top of him in his last two appearances. Love was decked by Bross. Is this going to be icing? Yeah, it is. Okay, now it's touched up by Stanell. From LIU, I don't know uh, the extent of the film study that uh, the Sharks did off that Mercyhurst game, but Lutzmeyer's been really good in traffic down low. I might want to try to let it rip from distance and see if I might be able to do something with a tip or a rebound. We get another look at it here. See, there he's playing poke checking on both sides, and boy, a oh. lot of net there. <laughs> there but was some space beyond the toe, too, Mike. If LIU unable to elevate, and enough left pad in the right spot. Rister Schaefer, that had heat on it, hits the end boards. RMU still in possession. Now the Sharks have it. Bear jousting with Osik. Make that 06. Sorry, I went back to my early 2000s Pirates reference there. Mike. Actually, I think he was from Long Island, though. So I was close. Stanell, wrist shot. It hit Adamo on the way in. He didn't know where it was. Now it comes back out to the red line. Adamo, the deep four checker now. Hunting one of the defensemen. That's DeSico. On the backhand tip in from Osik. Oh, how did Kramer pluck that out of midair? Backhand from Ebear. Waddled over to Lalonde. Brian Kramer doing battle with Osik right now. Here's McElhaney. It's a nice size defensive pair, that top defensive pair for LIU. The sophomore McElhaney, the senior Harris. 6'2 and 6'3. And nobody in that region of the ice, and it's going to go all the way down to Dylan Lubesmeyer. Yeah, Kramer trying to hit Goulash. Uh, Colonials working below the LIU goal line and then trying to jam it into the slot. Now we got a parade across the offensive blue line here. 14-14 left in this game. It's 2-1 Colonials. Colonials are posting up next to their uh, assigned defenders, Tim. Now Kramer, it's Roman Kramer coming through the circle. Tries a backhand shot, never quite got there. Goulash was camped out in front. Wrist shot Brian Kramer. Here, clack off the skate of Matt Harris. Up in the air it goes off the shaft of the stick of Brian Kramer. Now it's rolling on its side. Goulash uh, shaking his left hand as he goes to the bench. Think Tipped in by Spellacy. Big change here for RMU. I think he got whacked after a couple of 
opportunities in the slot where he just couldn't get the puck. Four new guys on the ice. Lone guy who stayed on is Guerra. He's the only player in the offensive zone now followed up by Head. And behind him, it's Cammy Bear. Caught, drop down, D to D pass. Love gets it from McElhinney. Now it's right back to Love. Makes that McKellian, sorry. Then Cammy Bear comes down the left wing wall. A little traffic behind the end line. Guerra sits up on the left post. Long shot from McKellian. They hit a couple bodies, then clangs off the end glass. 13 minutes left. Colonials up two to one. Yeah, Guerra, Guerra kind of setting a moving screen there, but Colonials couldn't take advantage. Falling down and getting back up is Gustav Mueller out there with Brodziak and Welsh. Now a long bank comes out for Cusick. Tracking down to Seco, the defenseman. Looking around as Rob McCollum, six foot two freshman from Thunder Bay. Well, Hernandez has really been effective on those four checks tonight, Tim. He's just uh, harassing and screwing up the breakout. Pitch forked in from Derek Osick. And the Colonials will come back the other way with 12.09 left and a 2-1 lead. Armu playing a very patient, persistent, get it deep type of game here. Not a lot of sustained pressure from either side here in this period. Hernandez to the Robert Morris logo. Hart to Kynan tried to take it away from Hops. Luzmeyer stops it. Lawson is there. Wraps it around the boards. Kept in though by Hops. Shot deflected. Goes behind Luzmeyer. Way down the wall is McElhaney. Shot comes in. Luzmeyer strong against the post. Watching closely as the action goes behind his cage. Four players down there. Two from each team. Schaefer tries to reach for the puck. Good effort though is digging in underneath him. I think it was Shackle for the Sharks. Actually, no, that was Connor Schmoll, the extra skater. Yeah, he's got a lot of burst here. Caught, dropped down. McElhaney. Now a bank goes off the sideboards and it goes into the auxiliary seating area and we will get a face-off in the neutral zone with 11.08 left and a 2-1 lead for RMU. Yeah, a little pushback that time from the Sharks, Tim, but the, the Colonials have been trying to just grind this period down just repeatedly getting to the red getting it deep and then seeing if they can get anything established as uh, one of the sharks has a broken stick it's zach bross off to swap out the lumber bross a uh, transfer from division three umass boston and a uh, pretty good hockey player three goals and an assist so far this year he was not division one eligible initially that's why he ended up in d3 but uh, he's a good get for the Sharks. Adamo with a good long stride. A little lost stick. This time it's from McElhaney. His partner Harris. Boy, these guys are on the ice a lot, aren't they? Two and three for the Sharks. Caught, dropped down by Shackle. Tried to go around Brian Kramer. Jenny is there to help out his defense partner. Bouncing puck now settled down by Adamo. Coming in three on two if they hurry, the Colonials. But it goes over the head of Ebert. Stops along the left wing wall. Back checking and hurrying to get there is Bross. Colonials have it. McKellian comes down the wall. He's got it outside the circle. Adamo comes out high to take his spot. Wrap around from McKellian. Shot and a score from the lawn. It's his third point of the night. Do you want a pretzel? I'll drink to your leg as it goes in from the lawn. You know, Nick Lalonde, Tim, working hard throughout that entire sequence. He was in the slot open, then he was covered, so you got to readjust. You got to reposition yourself. You got to make you got to make yourself available. And the Colonials finally connecting on one of these plays from behind the net. Uh, great job that time by McKellian, who ended up deep and got it to the slot. You know, they've had three or four similar opportunities and just weren't able to finish it that time. They did big goal with half a period left. Colonials up to, here's the swimming with bow-legged women. <laughs> it's a vintage shot from Spellacy into the far corner. Tyler Love, wrist shot, that one goes wide. That was the same scene, right? I'll drink to your leg. Thrasher Shark. Spellacy has it, crosses over his skates. 
This broadcast is really just for the two of us. Anybody else <laughs> listening just has to deal with it. McKellian wrist shot, deflected, caught, dropped down. If you're playing along at home, <laughs> the Colonials are playing a team called the Sharks. So we're making Jaws references. See if you can guess which one will be next. <laughs> Icing call. Come on, folks. They don't get to play San Jose. You know, this is our only chance. <laughs> How can we get away with this, Tim? I can do anything. I'm the chief of police. <laughs> I made the mistake of like trying to find some lines that we could use on the air, and I just went down this rabbit hole of Jaws <laughs> trivia about 15 minutes before the game. Oh, Garrett at the right point. Schaefer, wrist shot, echoes off the end wall. It's kept down deep by Cammy Bear off a feed from Guerra. Now Stanell is there. Here's Guerra at left point. He comes across the blue line. Now backhand shot. Ooh, wide open cage, but Head couldn't get there in time. Adamo gets an assist, so welcome back to Justin Adamo. His first point in his return. Yeah, he's been uh, impactful tonight. He's gotten his looks. He's tried to make plays with his physicality. And jumped on by Lubesmeyer, so that keeps 3-1 on the board. Oh, and oh. the Sharks pry it away from Lubesmeyer's grasp just after the whistle there. Media timeout, 3-1 to the score. Colonials winning by two, 8.43 remaining in this hockey game here on the Colonial Sports Network. As we take another look at the action behind the cage from McKellion on the wraparound. And the goal from the line. And the Colonials are beating the LIU Sharks here at the Clearview Arena on Neville Island at the Island Sports Center. Face-off coming in the shadow of the Hat Trick Club. Players joust for and it's controlled by the Colonials. Nick Perkusic takes a check after he makes the pass. Good hit from Shackle, big forward, slap shot coming. That one almost gets through, rebound chance, kept alive. Hernandez gets on the backhand now. Smoothly passes over to Perkusic, kept in by Kramer. Now Hernandez tries to catch it, can't do so. Able to step around one of the defenders though, and gets it back out to Kramer. Good zone possession here for the Colonials. Well, Sharks look a little gassed here, don't they? All the way across, Shackle can't even get it out. Jenny turns a shot, and ooh, that went off the bicep of the goaltender, Papura, rolled up his equipment. Yeah, deflection in front just hit him as opposed to him getting in the way of it. Now Hernandez through the circle, shot comes in, it goes in! Hartzikainen. Santeri Hartzikainen loves to go down to one knee and fire a slapper. That's his go-to move, and he's done it again. I got no spit. It's four to one, Colonials. You know, a little bit, further out in the slot area than the lawn had been moments ago, but same kind of concept. The Colonials at the start of this period, Tim, had some success trying to get the puck to the slot. They weren't successful in finishing the plays, but the last two have worked like a charm. Uh, the McKellian wrap around, the rebound goes right to Lalonde, and this time the pass right where it needed to be. Lalonde making himself available and making no mistake. Four to one RMU. Good tip in from Adamo. Now Osik showing some speed down the wall as McKellian is bumped. And did Lubesmeyer keep it out of the net somehow? He's doing the snow angel. I think he did. Dylan Lubesmeyer with all sorts of wild action in front of him is able to keep that puck from going across the end line. You know, it's really impressive how poised he is wow. in chaotic situations where a player or players are right on top of him. He's able to hold his ground as there's the turnover by McKellian right where you don't want to turn it over. And now the mad scramble begins. And Dylan Lubesmeyer holding the fort. Still uh, only that fluky bounce from behind the net has gotten past him so far. That shot just went off of Lubesmeyer. Still loose. Colonial's having trouble here as the Sharks are counterpunching. Now Roman Kramer goes across center ice, gets it in deep. Goulash trying to get it. Spellacy. Can't keep it in the offensive end. Quick pass out from Ward. Oh, heavy check from Schaefer. Absolutely plasters one of the Sharks. 
I think that was Schmoll. Yes, it was. No, I take that back. Who was that on the far side? That was Suzuki, who got all of Nolan Schaefer. Wrist shot in, saved by Lubesmeyer. Now a paddle save from Lubesmeyer, too. Oh, what a check. And that got the bench electrified for Robert Morris, as it should. Hernandez and Jenny with the assists on Hart to Kynan's oh. fifth of the season at 12.07, Tim. Spellacy, I think, caught some snow there or something, maybe caught the boards. He went down awkwardly and lost possession for a second. Now it's kicked all the way back to the offensive end by Gustav Mueller. Bradley Snell getting a little ice time here. It's the Colonials dress 7D tonight. Milan has had a huge night tonight. Three points. He's been on, on three of the four goals for the Colonials. Yeah, building off a strong game against Mercyhurst on January the 30th. Between and, the legs pass. And what has been a strong season for Nick Lalonde. Kramer across red, now across blue. That's Brian Kramer. Shot goes well wide of the intended target. Granty Bear spinning around, lifting sticks, trying to advance the puck down the wall. Now it comes into the neutral zone. Brian Kramer tried to take it away from Osik from behind. Granty Bear has it, double teamed from two Sharks defensive players. And now it leaves the zone, comes back right in front of the red light in the scores table region, now into the offensive end for Long Island University. And now we've got a whistle behind the play. Penalty behind the play. It's going to be a hook. I didn't see on who. Looks like they're getting Ebear. He was exhausted, and you can see him gasping for air as he comes back to the penalty box. I think he's just going to be happy to sit down, Mike. He's <laughs> that whole shift. He was pirouetting around and spinning around and trying to beat guys. We'll take another look at the replay of how he got the penalty. Yeah, trying to catch up to the play there, and you got to use your feet, not your stick. But with just 526 remaining. Third he, power play here for the Sharks? Yeah, even a th even a power play goal here, it's still going to be uh, an uphill battle for the Sharks. So two minutes for Oki for Ebear, 4-1 to one the score. Colonials out in front by two. Another good third period for RMU after what we saw last time out against Mercyhurst. And another one of those games where they're, you know, searching early and Dominating late. Oh, good save yeah. there. Neither nice save by Lubesmeyer. It's just a pack of bodies came moving towards the cage. Yeah, walk out of the corner and Lubesmeyer able to prevent that puck from going between his arm and his body. It's uh, three on three in the corner. And mm. there's that man again, Bross. Good stick work from Bross to get a little elevation and some leverage on that shot with 132 left in the power play. Now behind the net, Jenny had it, lost it, gets it back, backhand, and a clear for RMU. I think there's going to be another penalty on the Colonials yeah, here, kind of, too. Oh, is that going to be an interference on Adamo or a slash? Adamo's heading to the box. It was Mueller who took the brunt of that. He's waiting to see if there was a call, and eventually it came from behind the play. So High 40 sticky. seconds in. I would have guessed interference. but Yeah, uh, or I thought he might have slashed the stick, too. By the way, one minute and 20 seconds of two-man advantage. So uh, now things change a little bit. We'll take a timeout here. We'll, I, we'll keep it here, but timeout coming from the LIU Sharks. LIU taking a timeout to uh, try to keep that power play fresh. But uh, now you got a little opportunity knocking if you're LIU, Tim. You're getting outplayed and outskated here in the third period. But one minute and 20 seconds of two-man time. If you can cash that in, that makes it four to two. And then if you can cash again, that makes it four to three just in time to pull your goalie and try to make it four four. Let's check out the replay, Mike. It's not the greatest of plans, but you got a better yeah. idea? Great check from Schaefer. There's a second look.
advantage. And uh, one way you get out of these situations is try to get a face-off win and a quick clear. 4-1 the score with 4.17 left to go. Net remains empty. Draw comes back. Now it goes point to point. Pump fake on the shot. Now one hammers off the end boards and comes out to the high point. Good keep at the far point, though, as LIU continues to threaten. Pump fake, slap shot. Ooh, goes off the equipment of Lewismeyer and into the netting. Gustav Muller setting him up a couple of times for hard one-timers from the right circle, but uh, to no avail. 33 seconds left in the two-man disadvantage. 114 in the subsequent penalty, 358 in regulation, 4-1 Colonials. Down to 25 seconds on the first penalty, 106 on the second to Adamo. Wrist shot, that one misses the target, and the Sharks just cleared it on themselves. Yeah, that was Mueller again. Letting it rip, but not finding the twine. Now the goaltender will go back into the cage as the first penalty is about, is about to expire here. Ebear about to come back on the ice. Wrist shot deflected before it gets in now. Oh, Ebear is going to leak Break out. Away. Perkusik is trying to catch up here to make it a two-on-one. Ebear's shot goes over the crossbar. Ebear hunting for another point. Long shot in for Purr, catches it, drops it down, and McElhaney will scoop it up behind the net. They're down to 20 seconds left in the penalty to Adamo. Three minutes left in regulation. Somebody lost a glove, I think. And it looks like it was Brian Kramer. Goulash coming way into the offensive end and looked like uh, Harris might have stepped on the puck for a second. Now gets back up to his stride. Damo back, so the shorthanded situation has expired. LIU ices the puck, 2.36 left. And with 2.36 remaining in a three-goal lead, an offensive zone face-off for the Colonials. This one a lot like the Mercyhurst game, Tim. The Colonials didn't have to rally from a two-goal third-period deficit, but uh, they took their time finding their game in the first period, built on it in the second, and then played a really strong third. And that shot was deflected, and then Ebear was checked off of it from Hops. Now McKellian, wrist shot goes behind the end line, goes off of the back of the cage. McKellian gets at the point, slap shot goes off the skate, one of the fallen sharks. That was Aaron White. Now 206 remaining. Yeah, Colonial's fine to just work the wall, work below the goal line, keep the puck down here. Oh wow, somebody lost their stick, went high up in the air, bounces down. Goalie's coming out again, and another penalty's going to be forthcoming on RMU. Yes, caught by Lubesmeyer at the other end, and uh, I think it's Guerra who's looking around saying, what did mm. I do? Palms raised, still going to the penalty box. Did you catch the actual penalty, Mike? I believe it's interference at 18-10, uh, so a buck 50 left in regulation. Goaltender out again for LIU. Oh, Guerra slams the penalty box door shut. Mm. Well, now... Uh, Goaltenders back in the net for LIU. What's the point of that, do you think, with 150 left in regulation? Oh, no, they did it before. Not quite sure on that either, Mike. If you kind of give one up now, you're going to lose anyway, right? Um, as I look up here, I'm trying to get all the numbers on the ice. That's Gustav Mueller who's got it. And it's taken away from Jenny. Now, oh, good pass in front, but the shot is elevated wide. It is officially interference, and all the way to the other end of the ice goes a clear from RMU. Down under a minute 30 left in regulation. Zach Bross comes across the blue line. Had to take it away. Now he wipes out into the end boards. And a good comes poke check by Lubesmeyer. Right back to him. Oh, Lubesmeyer was he able to keep that out. Yes, he was. Again, that comes in at a funny angle like the goal that was allowed. I mean, that's one little fluky playoff of Tyler Love's stick behind the net. 
And we'll take another look at the uh, replay coming up here, but the thought already in progress. As Guerra had it in his, oh, look at that, it was stuck, stuck in his, in his skate. skate. Oh, and then he, he threw it up in the air. He didn't mean to do that. He's just trying to get it out of his skate. That's uh, here, get word from the truck that it was kind of a fluky play on the penalty. I, I don't think that's, reach. yeah, I don't think that's a penalty. Hard shot rebound, oh, that goes wide. In fact, one of the Sharks threw his hands up in celebration, yeah. McCollum. Tim, we're inside a minute. The puck is in the LIU end, I think it's time. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. <laughs> Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. That's the Don Meredith turn out the lights adaptation. Yes, right. I'm really dating myself with that one. <laughs> used to be, there used to be this guy on Monday Night Football named Don Meredith. He would sing when the game was decided. It was great stuff. 70s. I missed them. Was that 70s? Yeah, I guess it was 70s, yeah. Now down to 13 seconds. Turn out the lights, the party's over. Rapper is gonna play it out of the corner, and Lalonde peels off. Actually, Lalonde could have gone for the hat trick there. Long shot from McKellian, and that will do it. Leave the lights on at the ground round. Colonials win this one by a final of four to one. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. We'll come back to the post game show here on the Colonials Sports Network. Colonials win by three here at Clearview Arena. Mike Pursuta, Tim Benz back with you as RMU gets a victory over LIU. And we look at some of the final stats. While wow, Mike, 71 shots attempted for the Colonials, just 29 on net. The shots and goal even up. Maybe some of the power play numbers at the end there. A little pushback from LIU as the third period went along. Uh, blocking a bunch of shots did the Sharks, and that's why the uh, number, of the, the, the shot attempts didn't all get on goal there because of the shot block effort from the defenseman for the Sharks. But all in all, I think Derek Schooley will take that. We'll take the uh, third period result again like they had against Mercyhurst. Yeah, the Colonials have been good in third periods this year, particularly of late, especially in these last two games. And the Colonials kind of got what they expected from LIU tonight, a spirited effort, uh, a, a plan that the, a lot of that 1-3-1 one, one designed to come up the neutral zone and try to prevent the Colonials from playing the speed game that they like to play, from getting up and down the ice. And uh, RMU doing a good job of uh, way more often than not getting the puck deep and, and protecting it and not giving up a lot of quick transitions, not giving up a lot of odd man rushes. Um, the, the LIU power play is probably the weak link of the team right now and uh the sharks unable to take advantage when they had the man advantage it, uh good job tonight by rmu tim but uh, a lot of work to do tomorrow afternoon as well start things off on our look at the highlights with the power play goal from the colonials in the first period as nick lalon uh, deflected this one from grant ebear yeah nice job by brian kramer at the top of the play to get it to ebear and then Ebert, a good job to get it on net. He got this one on net, too, as uh, Milan gave it back to Ebert. Milan gave it back to him, had Spelsi on the right wing, went instead to Ebert, and he buries it. Here's the uh, wraparound by McKelly, and I thought that was a pass initially, but it worked out that way, a save, and then the uh, puck leading to Milan, uh, who had extricated himself from the defense, and he buries it from close range. That gave uh, the Colonials a lot of breathing room. And then uh, here's uh, Hartukani. You see him tapping. He wanted it. And That's his patented and move. As he gets himself open and then uh, goes down the one knee to finish. Uh, nice job by the Colonials of uh, playing, eh, maybe not 60 minutes, but uh, close, close enough to uh, get out of here with a 3-1 win in game one of this two-game series against the Sharks. Goal number six of the season for Lalonde with those two, and number five for Santeri Hart to Kynan. Uh, for Grant Bear, he mentioned, unless he gets credit for another assist along the way. Does he have three assists now? Is he, is he two assists in the game tonight? Do you have uh, three points? I wasn't sure if we... Uh, no, it was uh, Hart, excuse me, Hernandez and Jenny on the okay. last one. All right, so then... The Hart uh, to Kynan goal. Bear gets up to 19 points after the goal and the assist as he continues to move up the Atlantic hockey chart. Interesting night for Hart to kind and he started on the wing and ended up at center. Yeah, and, and, and he's uh, gone back and forth between those two positions this year. 
Guerra uh, was starting out at the first line center and then ended up with some time on the fourth line. And now Derek Schooley picking up the headset, joining us right now after a 4-1 Colonials victory. Derek, uh, you guys got four goals in the third period last time out against Mercyhurst, two goals this time. You had to scramble back against the Lakers in the third. This time you had a lead and you extended a lead. Yeah, we did a good job in the third period. I, I, we challenged our guys to go out and do the little things that uh, works into to getting uh, the big thing and the big thing at the ends of the 4-1 win. So I thought our guys did a, a good job in the third period and you know that's where that's the way we need to play against these guys. And I talked to Mike um, about this and you got to be you got to be ready to to be patient in the neutral zone. We talked about as a team be competitively patient and uh, I thought we were pretty good if you try to do too much in the neutral zone with the way they play which it works for their hockey team it's worked very well okay if we try to do too much in the neutral zone then you get in trouble and they come back at you and counter punch so you got to be patient that would seem to be a tough thing to get across uh, that, that goes against the competitive nature doesn't it to, to be competitively patient how do you oxymoron is that what you say <laughs> yeah maybe maybe but uh, did i don't know did playing mercyhurst in that speed game recently kind of prepare you not to turn the puck over and give up odd man rushes well i i mean i think you got to manage the puck and i thought we had a pretty good game plan of what we wanted to do and um i, I thought we won a lot of races and and um you know we were we were good down low what a great shift for the fourth goal you know, we went side to side, low to high, up and back, and, and then finally a great pop play for a goal. But um, a lot of good things, and obviously uh, uh, same thing on the, on the third goal as we went, uh, got a puck out in front, and uh, Nick, Nick, I thought, had an outstanding game. And uh, um, if he wasn't the number one star, I don't know who was because, uh, you know, he started, uh, as I told you, after the first period, kind of the utility infielder. He started on playing with um, Cameron and uh, Kyler Head, and uh, I, I really like uh, their, their chemistry with the two goals and then kind of switch the lines up a little bit to, to get uh, Grant and uh, Adamo and him together. And uh, Grant is a, is a different player with Justin Adamo. Uh, I don't know if he had a point in the three games that Justin didn't play, but was uh, a different player down low with, uh, with Justin. And it's a big, uh, you know, a big person to have back in the lineup. Good job out of Luzmar between the pipes tonight. Yeah, Dylan had to be solid. I mean, Dylan, there were some ones. There was a big save that he made when it was 2-1 with the, with the left pad. And, uh, you know, he only had three shots in the, in the first. And I thought we were really good in that period. And then I thought they kind of took it to us a little bit and was, was good. And unlucky goal that he gave up. But, uh, um, you know, he made the saves that he had to. And that's what you asked from a goaltender. And um, I said it to a USCHO article. We've got good goaltenders here. And... Uh, uh, good to see him have success, and uh, especially uh, uh, in games that you gotta, you have to, you know, you really have to be patient. You can't count, can't give them chances. And, and Dylan helped us when we did give them chances. Given uh, what you might be looking at here, uh, heading toward the postseason, does this feel like half a win? That you need, you really need to finish it off tomorrow. Yeah, this is, you know, you. Uh, when with no pairwise, you got to. I think the the thing that you got to look at is is wins, and uh, you just have to you have to get wins, and you build your resume through wins and losses. And um, you, we we talked about uh, one of our our goals and standards is that we wanted to to go four and two non conference. We talked about uh, a seven game series, and the seven game series now uh, we were. The first seven game series we went five and two. The second one we went six and one. And right now we're in a two two because Mercyhurst won the first two. And this is game three of, in their, our seven game split. So there's a lot of things that. Uh, game fives are always decisive, coach. Yeah, and, and then we then we got to go to the, the game six and seven are on the road at Kenesha. So um, things that we, we talk internally um, about are going to be uh, big tomorrow, and it's a quick turnaround. and. Our guys just said it. We got to go win the stretch right now. We got to go win the post game stretch and be prepared to, to play tomorrow. Derek, thanks. We'll do that and we'll do it at a strange time for a Friday game, but we're looking forward to it. Yeah, like, uh, like I told you when we did our Zoom this week, you know, Mike will be at happy hour by six. So that's the, that's the, the most important thing for him, at least. As long as you don't go overtime. <laughs> well, you'll still go at 6.15. You'll have plenty of time, man. <laughs> thanks, Derek. Okay, thanks, thanks guys.
All right, Derek Schooley, head coach of the Colonials. Final thoughts, Mike? Uh, you know, it's it's fun to see the Colonials scoring goals against him, and it's fun to be talking about potentially going to the NCAA tournament again and what has to happen to make that happen and a, a big step tonight. But they got to take another one tomorrow. They got to finish this off and get the sweep. It's not uh, like sweeping LIU is going to shoot the Colonials up from number 19 to number 11 the next time the USCHO poll comes out. But um, losing tomorrow would be bad. That, that would make it uh, a lot tougher to get that potential at-large bid and maybe paint RMU into the corner of having to win the conference It is tournament. almost kind of like a soccer back-to-back -back in aggregate situation. Yeah, you know? it's just, you got, it, and this is, you know, we talked a lot tonight about how LIU is not the typical first-year program, and it's not. These guys know how to play. They know what they can and can't do, and what they do, they do pretty well. But uh, you you have to outlast them and outpatience them and out-execute them. And uh, so far, so good, but i uh, got to do it for three more periods tomorrow afternoon. All right, that'll do it for us. Great job out of our crew. Again, final score, 4-1. to one. Colonials win over LIU. We'll do it again tomorrow at 3.05, a Friday afternoon hockey game here in the Colonial Sports Network.